It's good to have you all back. And welcome to the panel called The Advantages of Using Generative AI and Conversational AI in the Enterprise Space, where innovation would meet business excellence. We are joined today by leading experts from UI, Microsoft, and Druid to explore the revolutionary impact of ChatGPT in the enterprise world and how companies can make the best use of it, tackling the challenges related to security and explore the business opportunity that it brings. I give a warm welcome to Alexander Capodroso, Data and AI Lead for Central Europe at Microsoft, Anies Kanis Goda, Senior Cloud Solution Architect, Data and AI at Microsoft, our partner, Aurelia Kostake, MAI Intelligent Automation Leader at EY, and my colleagues, Raluca Tatarushanu, VP of Sales at Druid, and Andrea Plesha, Chief Customer Officer and Co-Founder of Druid. So, I would also like to say uh, hi to the representative uh, from Women in Tech and Women in Technology, to whom uh, I have my colleagues here being part of their, their board. And so, say hi to the persons uh, online that are still watching us. And so, um, this would lead me to the first question of the panel. <laughs> and I will sit down. And this one goes to Andrea. And so, Andrea, how do you see ChatGPT being perceived in the enterprise world? First of all, I see uh, a lot of interest after we overcome the fear of security. So, uh, everyone talks nicely about ChatGPT. Uh, they, they all played around in B2C environments on OpenAI, open uh, ChatGPT. But the main concern when we go to customers is, is this secure enough for my organization? And here is where uh, Microsoft Azure uh, or ChatGPT or OpenAI uh, play, comes into picture. And also Druid platform that, uh, as you saw earlier, prepares the content that is passed to the ChatGPT prompts within Azure and controls the set of data that is taken from the organization. And I think we will learn more from Microsoft itself. Exactly. And so this question would go to Agnieszka, and uh, I would ask her what would be her advice for enterprises to ensure, let's call the responsible use of ChatGPT within Microsoft Azure OpenAI in their uh, daily operations. So, and I would, uh, I would like to learn more about security aspects, of course, data protection, data leakage, and so on. So, Anieszka. Yeah, sure. Um, I agree with what Aurelia just said. So, the security aspect is extremely important, and all our partners and all our customers ask us about it. But let me maybe cover three aspects security, data privacy, and, and cost, because these are the three areas where most risks exist when it comes to uh, Azure OpenAI. First, security. So, um, Azure OpenAI is, is different than uh, OpenAI, of course, and the main difference is that uh, we provide this extra level of security, of data, data privacy, we have our SLAs. And this is simply extremely important, and this is what makes our service, Azure OpenAI, uh, different, because you receive a service that is fully integrated within the Azure ecosystem. Um, and th this matters because you can leverage all the functionalities, all the other services, security services, access management services, um, or audit services that actually exist on Azure. Um, for example, you can use Airbag, you can, and you should actually use VNets, uh, private links, uh, etc. Um, you should also probably use, at least to some extent, conditional access. So you can um, set it up like this, that people from outside of your geographical region or even country don't have access to your Azure services. Or people who are working on some uh, unregistered devices. And this is not uh, specific to Azure OpenAI. This is a characteristic of, of the whole Azure ecosystem, but it also refers to Azure OpenAI, and this is what makes it more secure. Apart from that, you can also 
leverage the logging and monitoring features which uh, are included in Azure OpenAI. So you can track really in detail um, who access the, the Azure OpenAI endpoints, uh, how they access it, meaning which models, how many tokens they used up, um, which prompt they used even, um, which completion that they received. And this is very valuable because this creates this transparency over how you have been using the service. As I mentioned, um, we also offer SLAs. So uh, we are providing a service on a specific level and we will stick to that. Uh, this is what you will receive. <laughs> Apart from that, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you for that. What I wanted to add is that uh, our customers would be benefiting from the SLAs that Microsoft Azure has to provide, but also the Druid platform has to provide. Um, and um, my question would be towards uh, towards Alexandra to, to continue is um, in regards to the benefits that Microsoft is seeing in the usage of GPT from Azure AI in conjunction with a platform such as Druid for conversational AI in the enterprise space? Yes, so th thanks for the question. Um, so yeah, we have actually a lot of benefits. I can mention uh, three main benefits when it comes to uh, the integration of the two platforms. The first one uh, for sure to mention is the uh, improved user experience. Um, we always, since we launched, you know, OpenAI, ChatGPT, and of course now we were talking about this amazing integration between our two platforms, this user experience has been uh, extremely enhanced. So we have this uh, powerful language understanding. So the organization, you, uh, audience, can enhance this conversational capabilities of the, of, of, of the system. So these, of course, lead to more natural and engaging interactions with the users, thanks to this mm -hmm. advancer and but sorry, natural language understanding and processing. Um, the combination, of course, allows the system to comprehend and respond accurately to complex, comp very complex and difficult user queries and requests. And this is for sure the first benefit. And the second one I would mention would be customization and personalization. So both, plat both platforms, Druid and Microsoft, enable enterprises to customize, to personalize their conversational AI solutions. So this flexibility allows you to tailor the system behavior, the responses, the overall experience to meet your specific business requirements and brand identity. And the third uh, I want to mention is uh, the analytics and insight that will be covered also uh, uh, later on by our amazing colleagues, uh, because the integration between Druid and Microsoft also provides valuable insight and analytics into uh, user interaction. So we can track the user preferences, we can track the behaviors or the common queries, and we can enable you know, them to make informed decisions to improve uh, your products, the services you're using, and the customer support you are, you're providing to your customer. And on, on top of this three, let me also add uh, the security, which of course has been deeply explained by Aga already, but I would also mention the integration with additional Azure services, such as, you know, machine learning, sentiment analysis, translation services, and even more. And last but not least, the uh, scalability and reliability. Um, Azure provides a robust and scalable infrastructure capable of handling enterprise level demands. So we ensure scalability and reliability together, enabling this smooth operation even during uh, peak usage periods. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. And it's good that you mentioned about other solutions, AI solution coming from, from Microsoft, because we have successfully integrated solution okay. for OCR purposes, for document understanding, exactly. using the, the Microsoft technology as well, because Druid eventually became a, an AI hub, a, a platform that has the ability to use those other technologies uh, in the journey of both the customers and, and the employees. And uh, now um, going towards, uh, towards Aurelia. Aurelia is also a pioneer in the hyper automation space and intelligent automation space. And my question towards her would be, uh, which are the industries that you would see most benefiting from this type of integration of generative AI within uh, hyper automation, 
delivered through, through um, RPA and conversational AI. Thank you, Irina. First of all, thank you for uh, having me here uh, today uh, to debate or to, to share ideas on this uh, very exciting uh, subject that we are now all uh, talking about. Uh, for sure, um, generative AI and now specifically in this discussion, ChatGPT, it's uh, accelerating the automation journey for all our uh, organizations. And uh, from my perspective, the technology is industry agnostic. I mean, it can be used in any industry, um, especially if we think of the use cases we have in the back office functions, right? It was earlier I saw the, the demo on the IT help desk, service desk. Uh, it can similarly be in HR for recruitment, for answering questions in HR, or in finance to interpret uh, reports and so on, or in legal, even, even quicker, I would say, applicability. Uh, so for sure, in any industry that can be used. But if we think more from the front, um, front office perspective, right, from the more specific activities, um, linked to customers, uh, then we can think of more uh, retail or financial services or utilities, the one that work with consumers, with end consumers, because as Alessandra mentioned earlier, uh, the technology allows uh, personalization. We know that hyper-personalization in these industries, it's a trend since uh, since few years, but now technology is supporting that. So we can not only do uh, uh, things differently, like more efficiently and more accurate and so on, but we can also do different things. And again, I think it was earlier mentioned, you know, like in e-commerce sites, you can now do end-to-end -end from asking a very generic question uh, until even acting and, and having the, um, the thing already acquired, like in the example with the car. Thank you. Thank you so much. And... Um, when talking about the impact this type of technologies would uh, bring to the business, uh, from your perspective, what should companies look towards when measuring this, uh, this impact? Aurelia. Uh, yes, if we think of measuring the impact, of course, here we, uh, we can go Similarly, what we were starting a few some years ago when we were starting the automations, clearly you can start with very um, uh, transparent business cases from very quantitative uh, information that you can measure, like uh, increasing productivity, reducing response time, and so on. Uh, but there are many qualitative aspects which at one point can be measured also, uh, uh, of course, like the customer experience that uh, is... Um, it was mentioned before, like also the employee experience, right? We are talking about our workforce that uh, normally uh, is looking for uh, upskilling, is looking for uh, new ways of working and so on. But also some social aspects like uh, um, better working life, like innovation, because all these technologies are also raising now the, the bar to a new ways of innovation. And we need to understand how do we capture uh, this in the in the business? How do we incorporate in our business models the new uh, technology to change our business model? So there are different aspects that uh, that can be um, uh, incorporated when looking at the benefits. But I would pause here to allow also my colleagues maybe to uh, to add some Thank some you. other thoughts. Thank you. It's it's all about improving the quality of life, right? Uh, Raluca, when you talk to our customers, what are how do they measure the impact, or what are their expectations in respect to the impact that this technology would bring? Uh, we started having discussions with customers for the last I don't know one month and a half already. So uh, we actually explored a lot of different use cases. Whether and I'll really uh, point them correctly, uh, whether we're talking about internal use case, and we had discussions with customers in relation with call center agents and how to speed up the uh, um, answering process so that they can incorporate the chatbot within the, uh, uh, the call center uh, space. We had discussions with customers from uh, healthcare uh, in relation with uh, the patient and how can the patient can actually 
gets the information much quicker. Um, so I think when they're actually measuring the uh, or the expectations, because I think uh, uh, expectations is uh, uh, what we're uh, discussing here, uh, expectations are very high because they actually want the customer, the end user, whether we're talking about a customer or, or uh, an employee, to have easy access to information and quick access, uh, and most importantly, accurate uh, answers. Because what we were missing maybe uh, until now was um, the fact that we didn't, we had to all the time measure uh, and um, correct all the questions and all the answers that uh, the chatbot was uh, uh, giving in relation with uh, with the customer. And now you know for sure that the answers are accurate. You're all the time getting the actual link from the uh, document that um, uh, the chatbot found the uh, the answer. So uh, I think this solution and the combination between the two solution uh, is the right answer to solve all this uh, all these problems and actually overcome them much quicker thank you and now i'm pointing towards my favorite topic when it comes to druid and you all know that the analytics part the dashboard area and so uh, my question would go first to alessandra and see how uh, microsoft azure open ai would measure the the analytics and um, uh, this uh, this impact and then uh, i will uh, go to andrea to tell us more about the perspective of druid when it comes to the analytics so alexandra please um, yeah, I also raised my hand because I wanted to also, <laughs> also talk also about industries, right? We talk about with Aurelia uh, the uh, the growth that we are having in many markets, and we mentioned a lot of industries. Uh, uh, just also wanted to add that in Central Europe we also see uh, seventy already seventy percent of the financial sector is um, companies uh, implementing or piloting AI uh, solutions across uh, several scenarios. And of course, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to analytics, we uh, we try to empower, as we are just saying, we're trying to empower the users uh, with fresh and you know uh, updated and very precise information when it comes to uh, all the preferences that users are having or all the behaviors that the users are having um, and the queries that have been launched uh, using the. Uh, the models, the AI models. So the main, the main approach uh, uh, here is to basically uh, give the companies a comprehensive view in a nutshell of what are the things that we want to improve, how we can improve the customer experience, how we can improve the services that we are delivering to our customers. So it's not, it's not mainly about the solution itself, but it's mainly about the impact that we want to create on, on our products and services, the impact that we are uh, that we would like to give to our customers, to our partners, to the people uh, using the technology itself. So I think the impact on 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 the analytics, which is actually what it what, what is actually collecting all the information coming from the motors, is what actually is empowering really the users within the organization to reach their goals. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, Analytics. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so from the read perspective, I already shown you what you can do with the with read platform. Uh, basically, what um, every conversation inside Druid and every integration inside Druid has that area where you can configure parameters related to FTE saved, cost saved, and also to the um, revenue generated through through calling the, the that specific integration or conversation. So inside the Druid dashboard, you can see in real time the evolution of the ROIs, and uh, we also created from to support our customers a vertical called customer experience inside our company. Uh, Gab is responsible of uh, of it, and we are monitoring the the virtual assistants that are already in production and uh, notify uh, our customers when there are. Uh, deviations from the normal behavior. There is a drop in the number of messages, or we notice that the, the virtual assistant has received a lot of uh, questions for a certain topic from the users, and we can build a roadmap 
to make that virtual assistant smarter as people start interacting. So you have to understand that virtual assistants, including chat GPT integration, is an ongoing training process, which is guided mainly by the user's adoption. So as much as you, the users are interacting with the assistant and the questions they are asking, that gives us the roadmap pointing towards the better ROIs. Thank you, and that's, this is an, uh, a trick question, or an additional question that I will, uh, I will address to both you and Aurelia. Uh, in respect to uh, the automation space, and in respect to RPA, and how do you see the benefits of, again, conversational AI powered or empowered by GPT in conjunction with, uh, with RPA? So is the recipe of success? It's uh, like uh, a love our, story. Uh, this, this is yeah. <laughs> this is this is for for Aurelia. Okay. So I think uh, as I as I was mentioning earlier, uh, it is an acceleration of the automation journey. So it is becoming much more efficient to automate, right? Uh, but in the same time, uh, and this is a wider discussion, of course. And I think Bogdan mentioned this at the beginning when opening. It's about the business value, right? How do we integrate the new technology in our approach for automation? What are the business objectives? And then how do we combine technology to achieve those objectives? And then we can say how and when we can use it. So I think this is the, the most important then just to use the new technology. I agree. Is there something that you want to add? No, more? I thought okay. it was for me, this question. Sorry. <laughs> you pinpoint uh, correctly. <laughs> you, you can add. Um, uh, so, um, in respect to giving uh, advices for the organization that are looking to adopt this technology, either it's conversational AI to start with or adopting them in a merged version, conversational AI plus GPT, uh, what would be your advice for the, the to, to, to the companies to start with? I think for them to uh, take this leap of faith uh, because uh, uh, there has been proven uh, uh, results in all the implementation that we have done uh, with all the customers that uh, we've, uh, uh, we've started projects with. Uh, and I think uh, it's just a matter of piloting seeing how the solution works, seeing how uh, quickly the results are coming, uh, and then we'll just let the magic happen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Anieshka, is there something that you would want to add in respect to giving an advice for the organization to start? I think the cooperation between business and IT is extremely important. It's important on every IT project, of course, but especially in this case, because there is so much hype surrounding these models and uh, they are quite universal and it's difficult to imagine a use case where they wouldn't bring value. But this means that these attempts to bring value, uh, this project have to be prioritized. And what Aurelia talked about, so how to measure the uplift, um, how to identify what really bring, brings value is extremely important. And this can be done only in cooperation between business and IT. Absolutely. And uh, I believe Alessandra coming from the business would agree with us. Right. Yes, absolutely. I'm I'm fully with Aga on this. I would say that the the most important thing that I would share as a as an advice would be to really clarify and define the objectives. So my suggestion would be start easily by identifying the specific goals that you want to achieve to the implementation of the technologies of the solutions, whether it's improving the customer service, the automated, automating the processes or uh, enhancing the product recommendation, uh, but having clear objectives will guide your implementation strategy first. And second, but not, but you know, uh, uh, very important as well as a point, if I may add, is to invest in data quality because this technology heavily rely on data for training and performance. So we want to ensure that the data is accurate, is relevant, is representative of the problem that you want to solve. So data quality is crucial for achieving this, you know, the, the optimal results. 
Um, Aurelia, is there something that you would want to add in terms of advice given to our customers? Yes, of course. I think the, the one key idea is to act now. Don't wait because this is the moment to start using the new technology. Uh, it will change completely our business models. We need to start now so that you understand the impact on your business. Talk to your board members, understand the impact on the organ your organization. Of course, plan it properly with the right governance, we got security, ethics, and all the challenges that we know are raised in, in this context with the right governance, with the right change management, but act now. That's my, my clear message. Well, act uh, right after this event, I'm you here. have you have our contacts, <laughs> and then by the way, uh, post the event. Uh, there would be a QR code where we would uh, encourage you to to scan and give feedback and talk to our. I think it's called Claude or something. Our or a virtual assistant that would gather uh, your your feedback because we are very curious to to learn how you feel about this technology and how eager you are to to start using it. So um, thank you. Thank you uh, to, to everyone who has been part of this, this panel. Thank you to our guest contributors. Um, and um, yes, we will move to the next, uh, the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you also. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.